Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Indie Author Connection. I am your host, Ivo Lettercast, and today we are interviewing De La Claire, who has been writing in the contemporary romance genre for 30 whole years, and um, she currently has published more than 60 books. Um, De, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about you and your story. Sure. Hi, Ivo. Thanks for having me. Um, just so you know, this is my very first podcast. So I'm excited to be here and just a teeny bit intimidated. Um, but since I get to talk about writing, I can handle it. Um, my start to writing was a little bit different. Um, I began as many do as a reader and I fell in love with books and all that. And I wanted to try my hand at writing. All, all that is very usual and standard, right? Uh, but then something really tragic happened. My younger sister, Nancy, um, was diagnosed with a brain tumor at age 25, and she died the next year. Um, and I was married. Yeah, it was not a good time. I was married and had a young son. And I have to admit, my sister's uh, death really sent me into a tailspin. Um, real serious depression. I hid out in our, we were living in California at the time in San Diego area. And we, I just stayed in the condo with the drapes pulled. And after a few months, my husband, who's just the sweetest guy in the world, he said, listen, you can't just sit there and hide from the world, uh, either start writing or get a job because I hear McDonald's is hiring. Well, that lit a fire under me because I really did not want to work at McDonald's. So I started to read a romance about a woman who uh, worked at a toy factory. And I thought, oh, what a great idea. Um, I can see all sorts of really funny scenes and disasters happening and her blowing up labs and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, no, this book wasn't like that at all. It was about a woman who was, um, the heroine was the secretary to the owner of this teddy bear factory where they made stuffed teddy bears. And I kind of liked my story better. So that's when I sat down and wrote and it's called Once Upon a Jinx. And I sold it to Harlequin Romances way back in the day before they had indie books. And the book is dedicated to my sister, Nancy, and it's available at Amazon. And it's a total comedy of errors. That's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that like, you had to go through such a traumatic experience to get to where you're at today. But I think your story is actually pretty common for a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of us have either like, like a big sudden trauma or sort of like a long history of like low grade trauma that has brought us to the ability to really like create art and um, craft stories with our words for other people to escape I think, to. I think they say that comedians in particular, that comedy, that humor comes from pain. Oh and yeah. That's very true. Yeah, very I true. agree. Um, so on, on that note, um, as an author, you know, what is your goal with your books and what drives you to keep putting your words out there for the world? To be honest, I just want to entertain my readers. Um, I want them to feel something as a result of having read my book, whether it's laughter, joy, passion, um, even tears. Um, I want them to experience that and come away on some kind of a high. Um, if I can do that, I'm thrilled. Um, I love writing about family. I was fairly lucky uh, in that I had, uh, a re you know, all families, they have their issues, um, but mine was fairly normal. Um, but I never knew a grandfather. They both um, died before I was born. Um, so a lot of my books have grandfather figures in them as the patriarch. Uh, and I create them in ways that I would have loved to have experienced. And um, to be honest, since their family is perfect, I try and communicate the best of a family unit uh, and allow my romances to maybe perhaps show the possibilities of family life rather than the reality many of us are forced to live. I think that's 
like a really no noble, if I might say so myself, it's like a really noble kind of cause that you've got. Um, I know that in particular, young me would have probably eaten your books up. Aww. Um, I think it's awesome that you create like a safe haven for your people. That's what I want. I want the reader to feel like I would love to have these people in my life. Yeah. I would love to have them in my life. That's awesome. <laughs> so the book you wanted to talk about today is called How to Hide a Baby, right? Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about what the plot is, maybe get a, give us an appetizer, um, tell us about your characters. Sure. Um, so How to Hide a Baby is the first in a six book series uh, about six Italian-American brothers. And each book is one of the brothers' stories. And the first up is the oldest, Luke Salvatore, um, who is very unexpectedly left in charge of his infant niece um, with no idea how to care for her. And he um, kind of ropes his executive assistant, Grace, the heroine, into helping him out. Unfortunately, the authorities, through a series of, again, rather amusing events, um, uh, find out about this abandoned baby. And Luke, the hero, out of sheer desperation, um, makes up stories about his relationship with Grace and with the baby to each of the authority figures that become involved in the whole situation. So at work, they're just boss and assistant. But for the police, they're engaged. When CPS gets involved in it, they're married. And um, for the various parents, they're either married, engaged, <laughs> the baby is either hers or not hers. So it's kind of like this crazy, um, nobody can keep the story straight, uh, comedy of errors. And does it, does it have a happy ending? Of course, all romances <laughs> have happy endings. Of course. <laughs> I think that's awesome. It sounds uh, similar to like a, I wouldn't say it's like the same as The Proposal, that movie The Proposal with Sandra Bullock. Oh yeah, that was a funny one. I like that one. Yeah, I really like the way that um, that she played that character. It sounds like you've <laughs> taken a similar plot and just like expanded upon it and made it even more like comedic. <laughs> that's awesome. Although this one was written before that movie came out. <laughs> I believe it though stole mine <laughs> right and um you are you are a best-selling author right like i'm a usa today best-selling author yeah. that's fantastic more than 10 million copies of my books worldwide so it's funny because um the tagline for this show is where you meet tomorrow's bestsellers today um but i think it's even better because like you you're already a best-selling author is this one of your books that has done like really well or is it a little yes. bit newer yeah, it's, it's a popular one, um, and I wasn't able to finish the series. There were the two brothers at the very end that I never got the opportunity to write their story, um, and so now I do, and the, the final two books come out this summer. So that's really fantastic. The series finished. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that um, awesome. I'm definitely going to read all of them. <laughs> we have... I appreciate um, it. Well, in our house, we've got like a, a library, like one room that's just dedicated to books. And okay. we have, you, you know, those like cubes from Ikea that are like four squares. Uh -huh. So we've got one that's dedicated to people who we know who are writers. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna buy your books and put them on that shelf. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a really great read though. So um, that said, if there was anything you could tell your readers, anything at all, what would it be? If you're a guy um, and you want to know what women secretly want and fantasize about, read a romance. And if you're a woman and need to escape for a few hours from reality and maybe your guy, um, read a romance. Romance novels are what women wish romance was like in real life. I believe that. Um, definitely, I'm definitely not a girl, but um, my, one of my partners is a, uh, is a woman and she 
just loves to escape into romance novels like I'm glad I'm yeah. glad yeah um all right so where can our audience find your work really easy it's dayleclair.com oh so, super easy yeah and for everybody who's listening instead of watching um that's https colon forward slash forward slash www.day Leclerc, Leclerc is spelled L E C L A I R E dot com. That's right. Um, and you mentioned you'd be willing to give away a free copy of your book to one of our fans here. So go ahead and tell yes. them how they can try to get a hold of that. I have a free um, trade size paperback of the first in another series um, called Sev's Blackmailed Bride. Oh my. And I would be happy, all you need to do to get a copy is subscribe to ilettercast.com. There's no purchase necessary to win. Um, you have to be 18 or older. Uh, and every month they randomly pick a mailing list subscriber um, to win a free signed book. So be on the lookout for that email um, announcing the winner and I pay for the shipping and everything, and you get a brand new book to read at your doorstep. So be sure to subscribe, look at the email. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, this is kind of a, I mentioned this on every episode, but um, it's kind of a pilot program for an indie author monthly subscription box that I wanna try out. Um, but I do need an audience participation, sort of like gauge whether or not it's a thing that would even really work out. Um, so your support when you subscribe to the mailing list, YouTube channel, podcast, et cetera, um, that lets me know that um, I definitely should actually get it up and running. And uh, so every author that you, you hear and see featured on this particular podcast will have an opportunity to participate in that. And every month you would, uh, if you were subscribed to that uh, subscription box, you would be receiving a new book from a random genre every month, just sort of give new writers, indie writers, um, that sort of promotion and give you an opportunity to broaden your reading horizons. All right, so thank you so much, yeah. Dela Claire, for being with us today. Um, and, <laughs> and thank you for sharing your books with the world, um, really with the world. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, um, and thank you so much for answering all my questions. Oh, anytime. It was fun to be here. I hope I can visit again. Absolutely. I'd love to have you back. <laughs> All right. And remember, you met her here first on the Indie Author Connection podcast, where we bring you tomorrow's bestsellers today. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi again, I have a letter cast here and I just want to thank you one more time for listening to and watching my podcast, Indie Author Connection, where we bring you tomorrow's bestsellers today. This is really a passion project of mine and that's why I'm giving away a free book at the end of every month. So if you tune in to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash J B speaks. I release a new video every Friday on that YouTube channel, um, and then of course the last Friday of every month is when I actually do a live stream to announce the winner of the free book for that month. So be sure to subscribe, obviously hit the notification bell if you want, no pressure. Um, and get notified when I release new content. I obviously, at the beginning of every month, do my Indie Author Connection interview, except for the beginning of June and the beginning of November. Those are the months that I take off from my interviews. Um, and then on the second Friday of every month, I actually have a Grimdark book club podcast that I do. The third Friday of every month is a little bit of a free-for-all. I kind of just put something up. It might be talking about my personal life, talking about a new upcoming story I'm working on, um, kind of just a wide range of topics. I occasionally do a paint with me or build with me for mini models, specifically to do with Warhammer. So I really try to make sure that there's a little bit of content for everyone on my channel, and I would super duper appreciate your subscription. My subscription goal for the end of this month is 3,000 subscribers. It doesn't sound like a lot in comparison to everyone else, but we've been hovering at 2,600 for about three months now, and I want to break that plateau. So if you wouldn't mind being one of my brand new subscribers, if you could just hit that button down below, I would really appreciate it. All right, that's everything for me, so I will see you 
slash speak to you next Friday. Remember to be kind to yourself and others.